all right reason number 17 and that is the use of heat appliances so now how does it affect your hair's moisture retention capability right and how does it contribute to dry hair so we all know by now that you know heat it disturbs the moisture balance in our hair because it'll you know it'll put a stress on already dry and porous ends right whenever you, you use high heat in your hair it will evaporate moisture from your hair's cortex at a very rapid rate right and think about it this way right? whenever you use any you know hot really high heat appliances such as the flat iron or whatnot it'll bake <laughs> bake and chip away the thin cuticle layers on your hair shaft right so just i mean just keep that in mind whenever you, you know you use harsh heat on your hair and once heat damage occurs it is irreversible right so that's why it's always recommended to you know to trim your hair right there's nothing you can do about heat damage here because you've already you know destroyed that uh, cuticles and the cortex you know it's now exposed so and you can't regain those uh, cuticles back right so you need to you know just get rid of you know that damaged part so here's the problem with heat straining your hair. So so many naturals heat strain the hair because I mean there are so many benefits to it, right? Uh, because we know you know when your hair is stretched, it's easier to maintain and so on and so forth, right? But remember that anytime you, you use heat in your hair, especially if it's high heat, right? So I'm not talking about the heat you use to deep condition your hair, you know, just putting a hot towel around your head. No, that's not the heat I'm talking about. I'm talking about like high heat from like flat iron, from like a curling iron or blow dryer, right? So anytime you use heat in your hair, you're going to compromise the health and also the, the strength of the chemical bonds in your hair. So... I never actually went into all this like scientific, very scientific detail, right? Uh, because the the your hair it is mainly made up of proteins that we know, and those protein bonds are held together by by hydrogen bonds, right? And hydrogen bonds that you know that that is that's what you know makes up water, right? H two O, right? So. Whenever you know you pass heat through, through your hair, you're pretty much zapping away those hydrogen bonds, protein bonds. You're pretty much compromising the you know the 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 chemical structure of your hair, right? M meaning you're also compromising the health of your hair, right? And as a result of that, right? Because you know because you've already compromised you know the you know the chemical you've created a chemical imbalance in your hair. What's going to happen is that your hair will lose its moisture retention capability. So it's not going to be able to retain, you know, um, moisture like it would, you know, if there's no, you know, like if, if it's not getting heat trained. And also, you know, sometimes, you know, you can get heat damage, like I said earlier on, and it's pretty much impossible to, you know, to put your hair back into its curly nature. So the question you have to ask yourself is, you know, does my hair need to be heat trained, right? Like, is it really necessary, right, for you to heat train your hair, right? And and um, yeah, I just answered that question, and and I'm gonna be sharing, you know, some other ways you can stretch out your hair without always using heat. So a solution will be. You know, if dry hair is such a major problem for you, right, it, it's best to just get rid of any heat appliances and not use them. Or maybe just use them once every three months or so, but not too often, right, not too often. Because I find that sometimes when I, you know, when I use a blow dryer or, or not, my hair will feel really dry. So I try not to put too much heat on my hair. But if you must use heat, because sometimes, you know, because... Cause you need to go get your hair done, cornrowed, and it's better to just go with your hair blow dried. It's better for the hairdresser, right? So if you must use heat in your hair, right, then you have to make sure that you deep condition your hair. So you want to start a week in advance and use, you know, deep conditioner with a uh, moisturizing deep conditioner. And then the day before you go get your hair done, the day before you, you, you know, blow dry your hair, or maybe on the same day even, right, you want to do a protein 
deep conditioning treatment because again remember right hydrogen and protein bonds right so the moisturizing uh, treatment will repair those H bonds and pretty much um, uh, repair anything that any damage in your hair and the protein bonds would the protein treatment would add you know will add more protein to your hair you know if there's any gaps or, or, or holes anything any chemical imbalance it'll make sure that you know at least your hair will come close to you know the right chemical balance right so you want to do the moisture and the protein balance hopefully <laughs> You're still there with me because I got kind of too scientific here. All right. So, yeah. So, you want to make sure that, you know, you moisturize your hair properly. You use a protein deep conditioning treatment to, you know, stre to strengthen your hair's um, hydrogen and protein bonds. So, that's pretty much um, that's pretty much it for, you know, the hair science. So, let me get back to, you know, the practical one. All right. So, hopefully, you guys are still with me and I haven't lost you. <laughs> Okay, so another thing you also want to do will be to reduce the, f the frequency of heat usage, right? So like I said, I mean, you can only, uh, I mean, you can use heat maybe just once a month, once every two months. And every time you use heat in your hair, you want to use a silicone base. Now, this is where it's okay to use, to put cones in your hair. So whenever you put heat in your hair, silicones work great because what they do is they, pro they provide a protective barrier to um your hair shop especially your hair cuticles right um, because we know cuticles cannot penetrate into our hair so it is awesome awesome so you're going to put some silicone based heat protectant on your hair you know to protect your hair and uh, you also want to um you also want to avoid using heat on troubled hair troubled hair i mean dry hair split ends breakage if your hair isn't healthy, putting heat on it, it's just going to make it worse, right? So try not to put heat on your hair if it's not healthy right now. And when it comes to the appliance, right, you want to choose an appliance that you can actually control the temperature, like the heat temperature. And it's, it's recommended to keep the temperatures between 100 to 170 degrees Celsius or 212 to 338 Fahrenheit, right? Any temperature that's higher than this can permanently damage your cuticles, meaning you're going to have to cut off your hair, meaning, you know, um, you can't really grow your hair as long as you want, want it to if you keep, you know, putting too much heat on your hair. And again, right, before putting heat on your hair, you want to ask yourself this question, right? Right? You want to ask yourself this question, right? Is my hair, hair healthy enough for heat at this time? Is it healthy enough? Because if it's not healthy, then please do not put heat. Just find another way. And so, what are some um, healthy alternatives to you know getting your hair to stay stretched without putting too much heat? So there are ten alternatives. There might be more if there you know if we can think of more ways. Please put it in the comment section below. So some um, alternatives could be burning, you know, after washing your hair, put it in a bun to keep it stretched. You can do bantu knot. You can you put your hair in like cornrows for like, you know, overnight. Flat waist, that's very fast. Curl from us, CWK girls. So CWK girls, I mean, that's, you know, the plate you can see here. Or, or you, can, you can also put your hair in braids or big plaits. You can twist it, uh, do African threading, which I mean I've done. Or uh, another popular method is banding, right? So that's where that's where you will band your hair. Again, when I do write this blog post, I will make sure to include it somehow um, in this course. So again, back to you, ladies. Let me know. Have you ever experienced heat damage? So personally, I've never experienced it because I, I don't really use heat in my hair that often. And how do you minimize the use, the use of heat in your hair, right? Because some naturals use heat a lot and their hair stays healthy. But for, for most naturals, it's like bad news, right? So, yeah. So, let me know in the comment section below because I would really love to hear your input about how you are able to still maintain your hair while adding heat.